Anytime you rebuild a pump, you want to inspect the ceramic plungers for cracks. If you find any cracks at all, you will remove them and replace the plungers. You'll accomplish this by using, again, a 3 8 drive ratchet and a 17 millimeter socket. We're just going to remove one plunger to show you how to do it. Again, remember what I told you to be certain. Be careful that you don't smack your hand. So to do that, I'm going to move over to the farthest one. And you notice as I started taking it loose, the whole plunger started turning along with it. That's because of the plunger bolt O-rings. They grasp just tightly enough inside of that plunger to make it turn too. This plunger appears to be a bit discolored. As you can see, that's wiping right off. That's because of grease that was on there. Grease is installed when you put the pump together at the factory. They use a grease for lubrication so you don't have dry starts. Okay? Simply take a flat object and push the plunger bolt out. Then you can get a new plunger and replace it. In the meantime, before you do that, before you replace it, you want to clean the threads on the bolt as they were held in place with Loctite 271. In this case, I'm just going to use a pocket knife and chase the threads out, get all that dried Loctite out of there. If you have a brush, just a small wire brush or something like that, it would be helpful to use that. But you do want to get them good and clean. If you don't, when you replace them, the Loctite won't hold. Okay, the next item is to chase out the threads. This is an 8 millimeter, 1.25 pitch tap. If you can find a bottoming tap, it's better. I don't happen to have one at this point, but this will work. Just slowly run it in and cut that old Loctite out of the thread. You may feel it get a little bit snug at times, and when you do, you just stop and reverse your turn on it and then run it on in. Doing this carefully. because at a certain point it's going to bottom out on you. And that's it. Once it bottoms out, then you back it all the way back out. Next thing, you can use solvent. This is carburetor cleaner. And I have a can of canned air like you might use on your computer. If you happen to have a compressor with an air hose handy, that's even better. But I'm going to blow all that loose st stuff out of there. You see how all that blew out? Now just be on the safe side, I'm going to put a little carburetor cleaner in there. When I do this, note that I'm going to cover this hole partially with this cloth so it doesn't splatter back in my face. All right. 
Then once again, I'm gonna take the air, being careful to protect my face. That's, then you allow a moment for it to dry. Cut. Now we're going to replace the plunger with the pl plunger bolt having been cleaned and the thread surface inside the rod having been cleaned. First thing we're gonna do is apply Loctite 271. Again, that's Loctite 271. Do not use anything else. You do not use copious amounts of this either. Just a drop or two will do it. If you get too much on there, it'll stick to the plunger and weld that plunger onto that piston and the next time you have to remove it, you'll have to break it to get it off. Then just insert the bolt back in the plunger, roll it up there and tighten it finger tight. Now you have to torque that down. Take your torque wrench and adjust it for this particular bolt. It takes 14, 0.7 foot pounds. Then tighten your lock on the barrel so it doesn't come loose. I'm using a half inch to three eighths drive attachment to fit to this 17 millimeter socket. Now I'll turn it until the torque wrench clicks. All right, good and snug. That problem's taken care of.